flow. In this video, we're going to look at aggregate demand. So aggregate demand is the total quantity demanded of all goods and services included in real GDP at different price levels. We can think of the aggregate demand curve as a downward sloping demand curve that graphs the relationship between the quantity demanded and the price level. Spending on aggregate demand comes from four main areas or components, households, governments, businesses, and foreigners, customers from abroad. And you might have learned that real GDP equals C plus I plus G plus NX. So this is a good way to remember the four main spending components that make up aggregate demand. C is consumption spending by households. I is investment spending by businesses. And G is spending by the government, government purchases. And NX represents net exports, exports minus imports. Shocks or shifts to the aggregate demand curve give rise to short-run fluctuations in real GDP. So a, a negative shock to aggregate demand may cause the economy to slip into a recession, falling real GDP, falling real incomes, rising unemployment, for example. The aggregate demand curve slopes downward for three reasons. One is the real wealth or balance effect. As a price level rises, the value of money, or monetary wealth, decreases, so people feel less wealthy and they buy less goods and services. The interest rate effect. As a price level rises, people need to hold more money to carry out a given number of transactions. People can hold more money by saving less and selling their bonds. Less saving means higher interest rates. People will borrow and spend less at higher interest rates. So we get this inverse relationship. A higher price level leads to higher interest rates. People will borrow and spend less than at the higher interest rate. Aggregate demand curves slope downwards. And the final reason is this exchange rate effect. A higher price level increases the interest rate, as we just mentioned in number two here. As a result, foreigners will find it more attractive to invest in the U.S. at higher interest rates. Foreigners will demand more U.S. dollars in currency markets, and that increase in the demand for dollars will cause the dollar to appreciate. When the U.S. dollar appreciates, U.S. goods become relatively more expensive to foreigners, so foreigners buy less U.S. goods and services. So here again, we get an inverse relationship as the price level goes up. The quantity demanded of real GDP falls because of this exchange rate effect. Um, all these effects work logically in reverse, so as the price level falls, monetary wealth increases, people feel richer, they'll buy more goods and services. Uh, as the price level falls, interest rates will fall, uh, having a, an effect on people borrowing and spending more and so on. So all of these effects uh, work logically in reverse. Uh, the aggregate demand curve slopes downward not because of the substitution effect we learned about in microeconomics. The aggregate demand curve slopes downwards because of the three effects I just pointed to. So, for example, when the price of apples rises, people substitute to other goods like pears. However, in the macroeconomy, when the price level rises, the prices of all goods are increasing, so that possibility for substitution uh, no longer exists. Factors that increase aggregate demand and cause aggregate demand curve to shift. In this case, we're going to focus on things that cause aggregate demand to shift rightward. A stock market boom or a housing market boom. Consumers are feeling confident about their future income and job prospects. Pay raises, for example. End of year bonuses. Uh, businesses are feeling optimistic about future profits. A decrease in interest rates uh, will cause consumers and businesses to borrow more and spend more, increasing aggregate demand. An increase in government spending on military, roads, etc. will increase aggregate demand, cause the curve to shift right. A decrease in taxes or business taxes or investment tax credits will leave consumers and businesses with more money to spend, causing aggregate demand to shift right. Uh, foreign countries, if foreign countries are experiencing an economic boom, rising income, uh, some of this increased wealth and income in foreign countries will come the way of increased demand for U.S. goods and services, raising aggregate demand. 
An increase in the money supply by the Federal Reserve will lower interest rates, causing consumers and businesses to borrow and spend more. An expected increase in the price level, inflation, will cause more spending today as people try to buy more goods and services before uh, prices rise. If the U.S. dollar depreciates, foreigners will find U.S. goods relatively less, less expensive and buy more of them, increasing aggregate demand. A recession can be caused by a decrease in aggregate demand. To counteract the downturn in aggregate de demand, the government may use expansionary fiscal policy to try to increase aggregate demand. So one thing they could try to do is increase government spending, uh, stimulus spending, for example, and or a decrease in taxes. To, uh, to counteract the downturn in aggregate demand, the central bank or the Federal Reserve may use expansionary monetary policy, uh, increasing the money supply to lower interest rates to get consumers and businesses to borrow and spend more, thereby increasing aggregate demand. If there is a concern about inflation, a rising price level, the government and the central bank may try to decrease the aggregate demand to try to cool off the economy. And some ways to try to cool off the economy, get aggregate demand to shift left, would be increasing taxes and or decreasing government spending. In terms of monetary policy, a contractionary monetary policy would try to decrease the money supply. Inflation that is caused by a rising or increasing aggregate demand curve is sometimes called demand pull inflation. Okay, that's it for my review. I hope you found this video helpful.